Hey guys, Scott Patton here. You know, something I've done for years, I'm saying ever since I was about 16 years old, so I've made my own spinner baits and stuff. I'm going to go through the, you know, all the steps, you know, if you haven't ever done this or not, you know, something you could do, you know, you can do it in wintertime, stuff like that. You don't have to make hundreds or thousands of them, but you can just make some of your own spinner baits. And the reason I got into it is because I wanted a short, you know, a certain, uh war frame i wanted more of a compact spinner base you know which years ago you couldn't buy as many different size spinner baits as you can now as far as in you know more of a compact or, or longer length uh war form uh frame on the spinner bait itself but i'm gonna kind of show you what i do from step to step i'm gonna go through where i cut you know where i cut the wires i've got it measured where i cut, cut my own wires bend it then we're gonna pour the lead on it and then we're gonna clip the excess off from it and then we're going to go through the powder painting part of it. I've got uh, use a powder paint all of mine, and then we bake them. And then after that, we'll put the blades on this on the spinner bait. And then finally, we'll make our own skirts, our, uh, skirt tabs. I'll show you how I do all that. And then we'll have a complete assembled spinner bait. So we're going to go through the entire process. And I've already got one pre-cut here. I'm just going to cut some of these. I've already been out here pouring baits all morning. I decided I'd come out here and show you guys this. So what I've got is I got my pre-cut one. That's the length I wanted, okay? And I still got to wrap that into that. So you got to keep that in mind, you know, when you're going to build the length of your spinner bait from the lead head to where you tie, okay? So I'll put that together just like that, hold them together. You can see the difference in what comes from the factory. All right, now I'm going to take some side cutters. Just hold it right there together and just cut that end off, okay? Got all my trash right there in a little pan. All right, now once I cut that off, I'm going to take my needle nose spars. You got that straight in. And, of course, you're going to have to bend it in because you're going to put a hook on there and then pour the lead on it. You got to make sure that, that hook's not going to come loose or break through the lead, okay? This just keeps it good and tight. I just wrap that. It may take a little practice. Like I said, I've been doing this for years, but right there I've got my uh, loop to, to put my hook on all right so let's go over here <clears throat> where i got my lid already hot you guys uh, you know i got my, my sunglasses on just for safety but um you know i've been doing this a long time but you know i would say wear you know wear some gloves if you wanted to but i always keep my melt pot away from me in case any spills or splatters stuff like that but the number one thing is to be super super careful when uh, using uh, melted lead, okay, you guys, because I want nobody getting hurt. All right, so now I've got my mold. This, this is a do-it mold. I'm going to open this up. It's got different cavities in it from eighth to three, or that's from eighth, quarter, three-eighths and a half. But I'm pouring quarter, uh, quarter ounce spinner baits right now because I use this a lot in the fall. All right, you can see where I got it, you know, pre-bent. Now I'm going to just take my hook. I'm going to slide it over that right there. Uh, it hangs right there, guys. All right, now we're going to lay it in the mold. And this is the most precise part. You got to make sure this thing is laid in a mold right in order to pour that lead around that eye of that hook in the, in the water form itself. So we're going to lay that in there. All right, so I got that laid in there. You can see it's in, in, the, in the grooves. You can see the grooves right here. Your hook lays in that groove right there. I got my eye where the, the hook in the Wire forms tied together right there in the center of the cavity of the body. Be real easy. Close this down. All right. And that's going to hold that in place. You're going to keep a good tight grip. You want to make sure there's no debris or anything, in, you know, some spider lead or anything like that because you want that good uh, good and tight. That way the lead won't leak out and you have to clean clean your bodies up. Uh, so but these, these are really good modes and they do a real good job. So right now we're going to put this in there. We're going to pull the lever or the lead. Right there it is, you can see. Like I say, don't, uh, <clears throat> do not grab that by your hands, guys. All right, so you see that right there? I got poured perfectly. All right, so that's just one part of it. I got a pile right here that's hot, that are still hot. Here's some I've been pouring. I'm gonna grab one of these. I'm gonna grab one. And uh, you can see you got that right there. These, like I said, these are already cooled off, you guys. Make sure you let these things cool off before you go to touch them, okay? So I'm going to take that. And what I do is I just bend that, you know, and break that off. You can take some side cutters and cut that. But I don't know. It seems like I get a smoother edge on that right there, okay? 
So, uh, you got that? I'll take my needle and those pliers. I'll recycle that little piece of lead. Of course, you want to be careful dropping that in there. That is hot lead. Uh, so, there you go. You know, we poured our spinnerbait frames. I'm going to continue to pour some more of these out here. Um, and then we're going to get our powder paint out, and we'll show you guys the, pro the steps of powder painting, okay? Okay. Hey, guys. On this part of the video, I'm actually going to do a voice over here because uh, some reason it didn't record um, when we recorded the first time. So I'm going to try to talk you through this the best I can on this section. And then it's going to pick up again. But I'm getting ready to powder paint right here, you guys. I'm showing that uh, I use my heat gun. I usually set it up on high. The heat gun works real good. You can actually use a uh, like a small butane torch to do this also. But like I said, the heat gun has always worked real good for me. So I've got my bucket there that you saw, and I'm going to use that to hang them, uh, hang the lures with after I paint them because the paint is hot, and they, if they touch, then um, you can get them stuck together. And what I'm doing here is I'm showing that you need to pre-bend that wire with the angle in it. That way, when you uh, after you paint it, when you hang it up right here, <clears throat> excuse me, when you hang it up there, it'll hang there without falling off the bucket. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm showing you here. All right, so uh, like I say, you know, these, these things are going to be hot, you guys, if you do that. But, you know, of course, you don't want to be touching that lead part of it. And all you're going to be heating up is going to be the lead. You don't want to, uh, you know, heat, heat it too long. You can overheat these things. You can actually heat it where the paint will bubble up on you uh, and not make a good coat, coating on it. So here I am. I'm heating the lead. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going one side, then I'm going to rotate over the other side, get a balanced heat on the lead itself because you want to make sure that the paint is going to absorb all the way around it. See how I'm rolling it around there, you guys? Now I'm sticking it into the powder paint, paint rather. I'm going to reheat it just a little bit to make it, you know, uh, smooth itself out. And right there you go, you guys. You got a good, smooth uh, powder painted spinner bait. I, got a, I hung it up there like I was showing you on the bucket. I've already pre-bent all these spinner baits, so, you know, just do that before you start painting it to save you time. I'm going to this, heat this one up right here, guys. Putting it into the powder paint. That's a fluid bed, you guys. I got right there a white uh, canister you see there. It pumps air into it. You don't have to do that, but you can. Uh, it just kind of helps keep the paint, uh, you know, kind of fluffy and stuff, and it gets a real good coating on it. I painted another one there, and I think right here I'm going to take the, uh, this is the nice thing about the fluid bed I've got there. And you can buy those online from companies that uh, make uh, sales skirt materials and stuff like that. But I put the other one on there. I'm stirring it up so I'm going to break it loose because it gets compacted down when you're not using it. And even when I'm painting, guys, even if I'm not using this fluid bed, I want to take, take the old spoon and just stir that stuff around because, like I said, it breaks it up. Uh, it is like powder and will pack down and uh, to get a good even coat on it You want to uh, keep that you know, keep that paint uh, broken up. So it's uh It'll go on that uh, heat up on that lead a lot easier Sorry, it's not like I got a voicemail or text message coming in there. All right, there we go We're doing some chartreuse right there you know, a lot of times I'll use that chartreuse even on a white spinnerbait head because uh, it's a it's it just catches a lot of fish that way, and especially if you're fishing for smallmouth. If you got a lake with smallmouth, a chartreuse spinnerbait head is all really good on a, a white spinnerbait. And here I am, I believe. Yeah, I'm getting a brush right here because you got the paint that is um, still on the hole where you dipped it into the fluid bed. I'm using a, just a small brush to uh, brush that paint off, and I'm pretty sure I'll show that again later on when I'm getting ready to put them in the oven. But you won't brush that powder off that hole. That way you don't, when you heat it in the oven, I'm going to put it in my treasure and uh, you heat it in the oven and it don't, uh, you know, paint your hook all white. So that's what I'm doing right there and that's what I'm explaining. It was hot out this day, you guys. It was really warm. But uh, I'm probably talking about putting it in the treasure right there, you guys. So I'm going to go through here and paint a bunch of them up. 
And uh, then our next step is going to be to put it into uh, the oven. You can do this in a house, in an oven. I've done it for a lot of times. But we live in an RV right now. So I always use my tracer because you get a little bit older when you, uh, you know, when you bake them on there. You're just going to bake them on just for a few minutes. And I'll explain all that again here in just a few, uh, few minutes when we get to the next step. But it's important to powder, or to, you know, once you powder paint them, to bake them. Um, because that once you bake it for, you know, a few minutes it, that paint is going to be hard as a hard as a rock it's hard to even chip it off with a hammer so it, you'll get a longer lasting paint job on um on your spinner baits and here's a close-up of me heating it up so you kind of see what i'm doing there as i'm rotating it you see a good shot of that uh fluid bed there it's got that little pump on it pumps air into it like I said, it's not necessary, but if you're going to do a whole lot of these, I'd check into buying one of those. But you see right there, I'm turning up some. Different, seem like different color paints. Sometimes it has different texture, whiteness in, in the paint itself. It uh, seems like white is one that doesn't uh, take much air, where short trues might take a little bit more. All right, guys, we've got them all powder painted. We're gonna do the next step to your, your painting process. And like I said, this is an option, you don't have to do this, but this will bake the paint on to where you can't even hardly beat it off with a hammer. It, you know, you're fishing around rocks and stuff like that. Uh, it'll just keep the paint on there. But something I do, and I'm just using my Trader grill. I don't wanna go inside. You know, uh, we used to have a house where we, we bake uh, inside there. But uh, I'm going to use my tracer grill here to keep it from, because uh, it does give off a little older, but it doesn't last long. So, But I got my groups of spinner base here. I was talking about a while ago about, you know, getting the power to paint off the hooks before you actually put them in, in, the, uh, in the oven. So I'm just going to take a brush. I can just dust that stuff off. You can hold four or five of them together. But uh, see how good they clean the hooks up. All right. So then what I'm going to do, and I need to make a rack for this, so I can set a whole bunch of them in there. I'm going to just hang them up into the grill. So you can see I got some chartreuse ones already in there. The main thing is you don't want them touching anything, okay? I could probably crowd them and get a little bit more of them in here than what I'm putting. But like I said, let me grab some more. always done this like I say for my own I always like building spinner baits modifying them and stuff like that and I sell a lot of them over the years I used to sell a bunch of them but uh, I sell them to all my guide customers and stuff like that so if any of you guys are interested in these spinner baits you can get a hold of me look like any one two three four five Alright, so I'm just gonna shut the oven door. I'm gonna cook these about 300 or bake them about 300. I'm gonna let them bake probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes, just get them good and hot. Now I'm gonna turn it off and pull off, then we'll take them back out there, guys. So uh, after this, and then we'll go in there and put some blades and stuff on them, and then we'll show you how to build your own skirts. And that's one of the fun things is you can put so many different skirt combinations together and stuff, you know, you know, depending on the water clarity particular lake you're fishing stuff like that but anyways uh let's let these bake and we'll get back with you guys hey and also guys make sure you hit that subscribe button i really appreciate it and uh, we'll keep on putting more uh stuff out like this for you if you got any comments on a video you may want to see just go down and put it in the comments and uh, we'll work on getting that done for you all right guys these are done we just got through eating some lunch it is about 95 degrees out here today it's hot but uh 
let these cool off. Got our finished product on the paint right there. So I'm just going to unload these. I always try to keep them somewhat order there. So easily get tangled up with those hooks. But I'll take all these in now. And uh, you know, paint is going to be chip resistant now since I've baked it. And uh, our next step is going to be putting some uh, swivel. I mean, some. Uh, our next step is going to be putting the blades on. And then after that, we will get busy on doing our skirts. But anyways, guys, I'm going to take these inside. I'm going to throw them up the other batch I got on here and let them bake. bake. But uh, that's what we got. <clears throat> and uh, we'll catch you up inside the RV here. And uh, we'll start putting some baits and or some blades and skirts on these guys. Hey guys, we're here uh, on the third step of assembling your own spinner baits. Uh, I just want to say real fast, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, you guys, please click that, please click that thing for us. Hit that like button. And if you can share this video, it would be great too. But I appreciate you guys following along. Let's go on to step number three. All right, here's some of the spinner baits that we, you know, we painted and uh, poured. But anyway, so in order to get the arm length, this one that I actually built here, these are quarter round spinner baits again. I would take and hold that wire down to the back of the hook. Is what I do. This, this is a preset that I've done for a long time, and it works. The balance of the spinner baits good, so you just have to experiment on that. And depends on how you want to build your spinner baits. So I'm going to just cut that off. Pair of side cutters, okay? Real simple. All right, and then you're going to need your hollow beads. I'm just going to get a few of them out. I see them right here in this corner. That way, they're easy to grab. Look like they rolled on me some. But um, this is the clevis. This is what you're going to put your first blade on with. It's just almost like a, I'll give you a little picture of it once we uh, get it on there. I'm sure most of you have thrown spinner baits, you know what they are. All right, so I always like to put one bead on first, you guys. And the reason I like two is because if you're fishing around grass and stuff, one thing I'm going to have to do, I always, you know, if you're fishing around grass and stuff, I'm telling you that first speed just seems like it really keeps a lot of uh, a lot of stuff from wrapping around that tip of that clevis when you put that uh, first uh, blade on there. So it's just one of the things I do, and trust me, it's worth it. So okay, so I got my clevis. I'm gonna pick out the blade that I want to go with. I'll go with this little. Uh, no, let's go with this copper blade. Something I do is. A lot of guys don't use copper blades. I really like copper blades a lot, especially in stained water over cl in cloudy days and stuff. It's just a flash that the fish just are not seeing them real, a whole lot. But of course, you know, I got copper, gold, and nickel. But uh, we're going to rig this one up with a copper blade up front. This is about a number three Colorado. I say it's probably about three. So you can put that on just like that. Make sure you put the the rounded part of the blade going towards the tie of the spinner bait because if not it won't spin on you guys okay see that right there all right now on colorado when i got use a colorado blade or an indiana blade on the front i'll use i will put three blades or three beads on next if i do a tandem colorado because of the length of the blades you'll have to go with a uh probably four or five uh beads okay and the reason you got to do that is because uh, the blades have to have enough water in order to spin that bigger blade. Or the, uh, the bigger blade has to have enough water in order to spin it. So if you're going to do Colorado's, again, three beads uh, or Indiana. If I'm going to do Indiana up front, too, I'll do three, three beads. If I'm going to use a, a tandem willow leaf spinner bait, then I'll put four or five uh, beads on there because they have to be spaced. All right, now once I've done that, I'm gonna take and grab my pliers, I'll hold it right at the end, and you wanna make sure you get a good roll on this right here, okay? Just gonna spin that around, just like that right there, if you can see that. All right, now once you do that, and this is where a good pair of split rings, I use ball bearing swivels, uh, you don't have to, but I just always have used a ball bearing swivel. Take that, 
I'm going to have to put my glasses on for this, guys, because I can't see that split ring. But anyways, a good uh, pair of split rings makes all the difference in the world. You don't, and again, you don't have to have a split rings, but if you're going to do a bunch of these, it makes a big, big difference. And I'm going to go with a Colorado or Indiana blade of gold with this combination. Take that and just spin that around. It's on there good right there. Like I said, this is a quarter inch spinner bait. I want something small for this fall to uh, match a lot of this uh, fry we got. So then I'm going to take, put that on there. And then one of the key things right here is when you twist this eye close, you want to make sure it's going to be touching that water form. If not, you'll be fishing and you're going to end up using your, losing your swivel and your uh, blade. And you don't want to do that. So there, I got that good and tight. Up against there, pair of pliers. All right, hey guys, and right there you've got your uh, spinner bait, spinner bait blades on there, and you got your spinner bait. Next, we're going to build the skirts and put a skirt on there, and then uh, you'll have a completed spinner bait. So let's go on to the next step, guys. The next step is going to be the building our skirts. You know, this is something I've always uh, liked to do, and I've got more skirt tabs than I need. But I just like to experiment with colors and uh, whether it's my spinner base, buzz base, my jigs, what have you. But uh, since we're building spinner baits, I'm all, I've got some spinner bait colors here that we uh, uh, I've been catching fish on here on Chick. So um, let me kind of show you what what I do. First of all, as far as you can buy this little skirt tool in a lot of different places, this is actually a knitting needle. Okay, uh, I've been using these for years. This is number twelve, I believe it is. You can see all I've done is, you know, bought the, they come in two packs, cut the end off of the knitting needle, took a, a small file and uh, smoothed that down real, real fine where it won't be uh, jagging on my uh, skirts or even on my fingers. But this is what I've used for years. They've actually got a skirt tool and I've got some of them. And I've got some of them. Anyways, this is a skirt tool you can buy. This is a pre-made. But I myself, I just don't care for them that much. You know, of course, it works the same way. You put your band on. You're going to put your skirt material, your tabs, in like this. And then you're supposed to just pull, pull them inside. Like I say, I'm not real crazy about it. But it pulls it inside, and then you roll your, roll your skirt off from there. But what I've always done for years is just use these knitting needles. To me, they just work better, and they're easier. And they don't hardly cost nothing. But anyhow, let's get uh, get some uh, skirt together. I said this chartreuse uh, white and blue has been good. So this is what we call a skirt tab, you guys, okay? It's just a single tab, okay? Now, you can buy skirts already made if you want to. But like I said, I've always made my own. I can add how much chartreuse I want, how much how much blue I want in it. And like I said, it don't matter if I'm making, you know, you know buzz bait skirts, jig skirts, whatever. I can fix the combination I want. All right, and here's a, a chartreuse tab. I'm just going to use half of that. So I'll break it in half. I'm going to lay it down. They got my blue tab right here. I'm going to just use a piece of that, a half of that. Again, just like that. So I broke it in half. Mm. So I'll lay them all flat like that. Guys, um, you've got to buy these bands. If you're going to build your own skirts, it's a little black band. It's a hollow, a hollow piece of rubber. And... Uh, I always keep them like a little Tupperware bow, and I just use silicone spray. I've done this forever. I mean, 20, 25 years. Take that silicone spray, just spray some in there. I shake it up. I keep these things, it keeps these things slick and it actually keeps them from drying out. And I've never ever had the silicone spray do any damage to any of my skirt bands. I've got them there that have been out there on base for two years or longer. But anyway, so I got my I got my knitting needle, my skirt tool I made. I'm gonna stick that band on the end of it, like it says hollow like that. All right, then I'm gonna just slide it on my fingers. This silicone, what it does, it helps it helps it slide onto that band. This band right here is a, is a newer one, so it's tight. Now, so I'll pull it on just like that. I usually put two or three on at a time. The band here wasn't as bad. Some of them just going to be tighter than others, guys. All right, so I got a couple of them on there. So what I've done 
is I've taken a whole a whole white tab, okay, laid down. I've taken my chartreuse tab, and these are called tabs, guys, okay? When, and when we are talking about buying script materials, each one of these is called a, just a single tab, okay? So I got a whole white one. I've taken a chartreuse one, broke it in half, laid on top of that. And I broke a blue one in half too, because I'm going to make a chartreuse and white skirt. I'm going to take and just roll these up together on the ends of them. We'll just ball it up like that. And then I can take my knitting needle. I'm going to stick this in. This is why you want to put your your uh, bands on first, okay? Because once you get that in there like that so far, then you're going to just slide that off, okay? See right there what I did? I just slid that off on, onto the band. Then you can pull that out just like that. I'm going to just hold it, and, and with the silicone spray on there, it slides up fairly easy. Getting about position where I want it, okay? So I've got two or three of them already made here. And uh, let me get a pair of scissors. Got my scissors. I'm going to hold all these tabs up together, you guys. I don't want to just cut them. I like putting them all together. I cut the end of that off like that. See your skirt material. Now, I've bought these tabs here long. They're actually for, um, for musky baits. But what I like to do is like having that tail out there on that. on that. So I'm going to cut that off. I don't always use it, but there's times I will use it when I'm fishing. I may get out there and decide I don't want that on there. And I'll cut that off, uh, especially because these spinner baits here I'm going to use on a quarter ounce spinner bait. So I don't want that big of a body of a, uh, of a skirt on my spinner bait. But there's that right there. I'm going to slide that down where I want it. You always can kind of adjust where you want, want your tabs. Or your band, rather. Right there you go, guys. See so how perfect that is? Beautiful skirt. Real easy. You know, you can, you know, make make your jig skirts, your buzz baits, spinner baits. Man, this is a real cool thing to do. Whether or not, you know, even if you ain't going to pour your own legs and stuff like that, you can always buy these tabs and skirt material and build your own skirts, guys. A lot of times, uh, if I know I'm going to be fishing, a, a, you know, jigs a lot, if it's going to be primary bait and I'm fishing in tournament, stuff like that, I always, I always carry my tabs with me when I go to a tournament because you never know, we might need to make a certain combination up. But uh, I'll keep them in the boat with me too because sometimes, you know, you could be fishing in a tournament all of a sudden that night before it could rain. You know, you might be using, say, you know, a green pumpkin uh, jig and then it could rain and muddy up the backs of the creeks and you may need to go to a green pumpkin and start trues and you may not have that tied up. But I, with that, I can take my green pumpkin skirts throw some chartreuse in it bam i got them right there on the water so that's a good reason a lot of times to carry some extra uh skirt making material with you on the boat guys all right um all right guys you know we've already got a bunch of skirts here we just showed you how to build your uh own skirts you know that bind the tabs and all so it's real simple the next thing all you got to do is take your skirt of course and i know all y'all probably already put skirts on before it's not no major deal but i just want to show you the complete product there you go all right see that right there guys that right there that spinner bait is made right here at the house you know custom made the war form skirt uh and my blade combination and um you know guys you can just take a part of this you know you can just do the blade combination you can build your own skirts you can build a whole spinner bait. But um, this is how, I, how I've always done it, and I've done it for years. And hopefully, uh, if y'all want to get into making some spinner baits of your own, uh, hopefully this helps you out in your fishing. But I appreciate it, you guys following along. I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment, you guys. Let me know about you guys, how y'all might build spinner baits, if you might have some tips for me. Or if you got any questions, I can answer them. Uh, just leave them below, and we'll get back to you guys, okay? Good luck and good fishing. We'll see you on the water.